Hello there and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Pascal Vimas and I will be showing you how I made this sequence here you see Houdini. And the cool thing about this is that I basically just repurposed a setup I made in my last tutorial. So I made a tutorial for this effect right here. Basically the splash is emitted from kind of like a circle and then from the circle we get circle here and then the circle gets some velocities and from here we also create the source for the flip simulation after making that tutorial i saw this video right here on instagram while i was scrolling around and i had the realization that i could just copy the setup i made for this and just repurpose it like change it up just slightly I get something that looks very similar to this I was kind of excited to try this out because it kind of demonstrates how awesome Houdini is when it comes to reusing the setups you already built or setups you find online uh, if you make a tutorial uh, with a little bit of creativity you can take something you already have and then redo it and reuse it because of the node based structure you can really build something that works again. And I really love that about Houdini, just the ability to reuse setups uh, and with minimal effort, uh, create something cool. With this, for example, I thought to myself, okay, so in my last video here, I have these circles emitting fluids, right? With the velocity. And with this, it was quite similar. I thought to myself, okay, if the rock is sliding, if I have a sliding rock animated, then I can just have a circle around here that conforms to the rock that just emits fluids and then just bumps into the rock that is moving and then uh, the rest would take care of itself and I tested that theory out so I made a small little test and this was my first attempt I just got my setup I had for the, from the last tutorial and I created this in, I think it took me about 20 minutes to set this up and sim it and render it, or half an hour, all in all. It was really quick to do. This prototype worked and then I did some iterations, just played around with uh, different resolution, different speeds, animated the rock differently, had a different camera. And in the end, I got this and I was quite happy with it and I just wanted to share what I did to get to this point. But I won't be covering the setup I did in my last tutorial because that's already out there. If you wanna do this tutorial, definitely check out the other tutorial first or just the flip simulation section. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description below and just make sure to do the flip simulation part. All right, so let's get going. This is the scene that I have. So I have the splash, I have a floor, which is the, the ice um, lake, and then I have the rock that's rolling. And here I also have an imported HDRI, I did something cool there, so to, to light the scene, I'll show that at the end. I'll start off by with a splash. As you can see here, the a big bulk of this, so I think this is all almost the same as in my other tutorial. So again, check that out to set that up. Of course, we start off by creating a rock that we can roll over or let slide over the ice surface. So I start off with a sphere, set that to polygon. I turned up the frequency a bit. I added some mountain noise. I VDB'd it, converted it back. I don't think that's actually that necessary here, but just to round off uh, those sharp bits, I think that's why I did it here. I added a match size to uh, move the rock so that it lies flat on the floor, as you can see here. Then I used a UV project node set to polar to get some quick UVs for later to add the rock texture. And then I added some initial velocities um, for the RPD solver. So I just wrote this v at v equals set channel vector name it somehow 
and then on the x-axis I added um, some extra velocity so if you preview this get some velocities pointing in that direction that's the base and then I just dropped down an RBT bullet solver for the collision of course just make sure to have the ground plane enabled I uh, reduced the friction and the dynamic friction scale so it just slides along on my time scale I reduced that a little bit to have kind of a, like a slow-mo rolling like we have in the video that I showed so 0 0.25 there and I think yeah I increased the gravity to minus 20 and added um, some drag spin because I did add some extra pop spin um, at the beginning of the sim. So I wrote in the in the activation I wrote dollar f um, smaller than three. So if uh, the frame number is smaller than three, so up until the frame three. We will have activation of this pop spin at 500 on this axis here and this made it so the rock spins a little bit at the beginning just or just has this rolling motion and the pop drag the drag spin here just counteracts that so it just doesn't keep spinning but slows down at some point to make that a little bit realistic and then i made sure to multiply my velocity with the time scale just to make sure that the motion blur is accurate so i just added vfv multiplied equals channel float and then i just reference the time scale so just copy parameter paste relative reference here and then i get that so it's always updated and that's the rock and the next step is getting that ring around the rock for the velocities and to source the flip. And for this, I'm going from the null here. Um, so for this, I first start with a, a circle. I then resample it to give it some more resolution. And then I reverse, I had to reverse the normals here because I'm using the normals later to ray them back onto the rock. Here I created normals that are pointing outwards, so v at n equals normalize at p, and these this creates these uh, outward pointing normals. And then I have a mesh size node that is linked, or that has the, uses the bounding box of the of a peaked rock so I put down a peak node and increase the distance a little bit so I'm increasing the size as you can see here so the ring gets scaled to fit that so I scale to fit and have that here so it's a little bit bigger than the actual rock this is what I wanted so I can later ray that down and then I um, used another metric size here Pro could probably do this in one but for some reason I did it like this I guess it worked better uh, I use a second match node and uh, set the justify to min um, so it's right at the bottom and then offset it a little bit so it I can use this have the circle just almost where it's touching the ground so a little bit above that and then I use a race up set to project race and then direction use the normals that we created here to project them to our rock and so this is how I get these, this line that moves with the rock. It's moving along with the rock. This is exactly what we need. So we get this thing here. And this is really important that you make sure that this is clean. So if it's not properly projecting onto whatever thing you're, you're projecting the circle on, then that's not going to be in that's going to be no good for later on so make sure this works properly and then the rest is pretty similar to what i had in my other tutorial so we create here for the source i just uh, resample it again to give it some uniform resolution subdivided it to have give it some more resolution added a poly extrude node and then extruded this made sure it's closed off so I have this closed off shape and then I add points from volume node and this is going to be our fluid source. And to give it some randomness so it's not always spraying out of the whole 
spring basically. I added an attribute noise float called the noise delete, crunched it up a little bit with a remap, played around with the element size of the noise, and then added a delete sub and changed that to points, delete selector, delete by expression. And then I used this expression here at dull is less than 0.1 to delete a certain part of the points here. So we get some randomness. And since this is moving along, I don't even have to animate the noise because it's moving through the noise. So we get some, yeah, random source. And something really important here is to cache this out because points from volume is a little bit weird. I I got some RAM leaks or at least when I was running the simulation for some reason sometimes on some frames my RAM usage spiked to infinity and basically crashed the whole simulation. After caching this and making sure there's nothing like bigger than the actual source I want. So sometimes if the race up was not working it was going way beyond that so it was creating way more points and then of course the rem usage would spike but sometimes that was not the case and it was just spiking the rem usage because of this node for some reason so caching that out helped and for the velocity shaping like i said before if you want to go over that just go to my other tutorial um you and do the tutorial for this bit basically and the uh, Net. But yeah, for the velocity uh, shaping, we basically have... So for the velocities, we start out with something like this. And then I just wanted to add some velocities from the rock. So the rock coming in like this, I just wanted to use those velocities in there as well. I just transferred the velocities to an attribute called v at v2. Then I transferred those over and then in an attribute VOP, I added them to my velocity. So with a bind set to V2, three floats, and then I added a multiply constant to reduce the amount to which this would be added. So if you want a little bit more influence from the rock direction, then this would be the place to add that in. But I just wanted to have um, a slight bit in there and then I just played around with the velocity values that look good for the final simulation and in the simulation itself so in the simulation itself the only thing I had to change was the static object of course needed to be set to be using uh, deforming geometry because it's moving I reduced the bounce because I didn't want the uh, uh, flip the, the water to bounce off the uh, rock. I just wanted to slide it along. So yeah, I would just reduce this to zero and reduce the dynamic friction scale, scale. That worked out well for me. Everything else is as in my other tutorial and that explains everything quite well. So I won't be going over that here. I think I just reduced the blur radius of the surface tension a bit, played around with these two settings a little bit. So how much of the velocities I want to get, I want to pump in and then the search radius of the particle step. I just, here I'm basically using the same value as the particle separation. But yeah, I was just playing around with these values a little bit. Yeah, after simming, I always make sure to, again, use the correct time scale because the whole sim is being run at a 0 0.25 time scale. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for the splash. So I get, ooh, that looks cool. Yeah, so I get something like this. And after rendering, that looked quite cool. So that worked out fine. And yeah, for the floor, so for the ice, um, I did not spend too much time on it because my main point I was trying to make is that you can repurpose the flip simulation quite well, but a uh, quick one. So this is just a plane um, and a UV texture. And then I'm using actually the same texture as I'm using for the rock. So I'm just using the normal. I'm just using um, the normals from the rock texture and putting that into a bump map with a very low value. Having that set to, I, I do even have, yeah, it's just the water preset. So, so yeah, I'm just using the water preset here. Um, that looked fine for this. And for the rock, I'm just 
using uh, rock texture. And the actual cool thing that I did to make the, um, the lake look correct was I, so here in my COP network, I'm loading in my HDRI. So I started off with this HDRI from Polyhaven and then I cropped off half. So I have this bit and then used that as a mask. And then I darkened this bit. I used a HSV node to reduce that saturation. Um, and then I used a color correct to multiply some blue values into it. And then I'm using this in my RS light dome. So if you type in op, you, um, if you type in this, you can just copy the null here go here so you just type in up double bond this and it will use whatever output you have here this was really cool because i didn't have to do anything for the lake except yeah so i had, for the whole scene i just basically have a large plane with normals to give it some detail and this hdri where half of it is darkened so we get this nice looking lake kind of so it's a very cheap effect, but it worked out quite well. And again, everything here was done quite quickly because I was still on a job and I was doing this in, in the evening, just uh, playing around with a couple of parameters, then setting off a render overnight and then playing around with the parameters just to get something that looked nice. So it was something very quick, but this turned out all right. And, and if you want um, a more detailed tutorial, okay, just comment down below. Yeah. I guess this was it. This was a very simple one. Not that complicated, but kind of cool. And it's just a really cool way again of uh, reusing a setup that is already there. So yeah, again, if you want the files, you can find them on Gumroad or Patreon. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like if you like the video. Um, and if you didn't like it, just comment down below and give me some feedback that would be highly appreciate it because i do want to get better at doing these tutorials and delivering them to you or just making better videos in general so if you have anything you want to get off your heart off your chest just um yeah write it or send me an email or write me a dm on instagram however you want to get in contact or if you have any questions just feel free to leave them or write me yeah thank you for your time thank you for listening but i had something valuable for you to share um, thank you.